Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, August 20th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's the Atlantic. We have a couple of storms to talk about today, but we'll start off with Danny here in the Central Atlantic. Been a bit of a roller coaster in terms of intensity. A couple of days ago looked poised to become a hurricane quickly, but yesterday hit a big speed bump, losing most of its thunderstorms, and now today regaining a compact area of thunderstorms and strengthening into a hurricane. We talked about the vigorous low-level circulation last night being a nice platform for Danny to potentially renew itself, and it did take advantage of that last night, regenerating thunderstorms and during the day today, showing off a small eye periodically in satellite imagery. It is getting obscured right now due to a convective burst in the eye wall, uh, causing high clouds to partially cover the eye at this point, but the eye is still there. And the storm overall, very, very tiny, perhaps smaller than was expected. Danny was never forecast to be very large, but this is a little bit smaller than perhaps we thought Danny was going to be. And this is going to come into play in the forecast for the coming days because smaller tropical cyclones are less effective at fighting the two things that Danny is going to be facing over the next couple of days, and that's going to be dry air to the northwest and wind shear uh, as it nears the Caribbean. This is the water vapor loop that shows you the evolution of upper level flow. And first of all, the orange colors indicate the dry air here that Danny is moving into as it gets separated from the deep tropical moisture belt that it formed in. And in addition, you can see these cirrus clouds moving from southwest to northeast, indicating about a 25 knot southwesterly flow. And this is going to be imparting wind shear on Danny as it moves toward the Lesser Antilles. Now, larger hurricanes can sometimes have a large enough area of thunderstorms that they release heat in the upper atmosphere that can nudge this wind shear area out of the way by generating an upper level high over the storm that projects itself out ahead of the storm as it moves toward the Caribbean. But for small storms like Danny, there's not a lot of heat output here with which to fight this upper level trough that is generating the southwesterly flow in the central Atlantic and eastern Caribbean. And so Danny is likely to struggle in a couple of days as it moves toward the Lesser Antilles. And the National Hurricane Center shows this in their forecast, expecting Danny to maintain hurricane intensity through Saturday and then dropping off to tropical storm intensity as it moves into the Lesser Antilles sometime early on Monday is the current expected timetable. And this will likely continue to weaken as it moves west, especially if land interaction with Puerto Rico and Hispaniola comes into play in the longer range. It's still possible Danny slips just north of the islands, but currently some kind of impact is expected in at least some of these northern islands, though not a hurricane impact at this time. Now we also have the Pacific to look at today. This is the large-scale basin look. Here's Hawaii. Tropical Depression 3 located to the southeast of Hawaii right now, newly designated by the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. And if we zoom in on the floater, we can see a nice compact area of thunderstorms, but there's an elongation of the low-level flow. If you look at the clouds, they move in a more elliptic fashion here, indicating that TD3 is not very consolidated at the moment, and that may take a while for it to become organized enough to start strengthening in earnest. But it will have several days to do so under a relatively favorable environment. There's going to be lower shear as it moves toward the northwest, and the waters near and south of Hawaii are much warmer than usual this year. We have a raging El Nino in the eastern Pacific, a tongue of warm water in the equatorial water of the Pacific, and often that's associated with warmer water to the north as well near Hawaii, and that is true of this year. Here's the sea surface temperature overlay. All of this water near and south of Hawaii is 28, even warmer than 29 degrees Celsius. That's about a degree or two even above average for this time of year. And usually cooler water, dry air, and wind shear protect Hawaii from tropical threats. But uh, in, a, in a year like this, we have more activity in the Central Pacific than usual. TD3 will be moving northwest and has the potential to impact the Hawaiian Islands in several days. This is the GFS forecast of upper level flow for 72 hours from now on Sunday, so three days from now, indicating a break in the mid-level ridge here west of Hawaii, lots of troughiness to the north, and this weakened ridge allows what would be Kilo, if it gets named as a tropical storm, to potentially curve up toward the north and northeast and potentially impact the Hawaiian Islands. And this is a currently uncertain solution. The Central Pacific Hurricane Center forecast track takes it up and uh, 
suggests that this may occur some kind of impact to the western part of the Hawaiian Islands, but some models keep it away from the islands and some take it over. Currently uncertain given that the system is elongated and until it consolidates into a singular compact circulation, the models will struggle with its track and uh, again five days out, just like with Danny, hard to pinpoint exactly where this could end up during that time. But these uh, hits from the south in Hawaii are historically the most uh, troubling ones because they can strengthen when they are south of the islands. Often when we're dealing with storms like Azel from last year and an, another storm that I currently can't recall the name of earlier this year that came up from the east-southeast, normally they encounter wind shear and dry air as they approach the islands. But those that come up and recurve out of the south are coming out of the warmest water, the most moist air, and can often be strong hurricanes when they come up like a Niki in 1992. Currently not saying that this will necessarily be anything like a Niki, but this kind of a track is concerning if it comes up uh, toward the Hawaiian Islands. This could easily be a strong hurricane if it does come close to the islands. So this will be worth paying attention to. Stay tuned with the Central Pacific Hurricane Center updates on this storm as it evolves as well. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.